joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show uh, from the worldwide leader in sports as well as the Stinking Truth podcast on Podcast One. He is Mark Schlereth. How are you, Mark? I'm doing great, Rich, and thanks for bringing up that soundbite because it reminds me that I single-handedly won Super Bowl 32. How, you ask? If yep. I don't miss my block, John Elway probably throws it short. We get tackled short of the first down. We kick a field goal, and we lose by four. So I miss my block, forces John out of the pocket. He scrambles, makes one of the most iconic runs in Super Bowl history, and we win that Super Bowl. You're welcome, Denver Broncos fans. Uh, courtesy of yours truly, Mark Schler, single-handedly winning Super Bowl 32. So are you saying when I have Sean O'Hara on an hour number two that it was his miss block that led to Eli getting into trouble to pirouette out of it and find David Tyree to put a, pin it on his helmet? It was it, He's going to say the same thing in hour two. Exactly. He should, too. Take credit for it. Us offensive linemen don't get a, little sh get a lot of shine, so take all you can get. Now, but I remember, though, you guys didn't want the shine. You refused to talk to the media when you played, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, back back then I did, but now I, you can't shut me up. So, uh, you know, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, right? you got to shake your moneymaker when you can. I like it. Mark Schlereth joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. What would it mean for – what does this mean for Elway to do this as an executive for Pat Bowen? Uh, what do you think? It would, it would be incredible. And it's not even so much about, you know, about doing it as an executive as it is uh, so much for Pat Bowen because Pat Bowen means so much to the Denver Broncos, one of the great owners – um, in the history of this league. And, you know, and I had nothing but uh, the utmost respect and treated us all like such professionals. And, and you know, it was one of those guys who just cared about winning. That's what he wanted. So uh, it would mean so much to John because they've had such a, uh, an incredibly close relationship throughout the, the course of John's football career. So Peyton Manning uh, and how he fares on Sunday, what do you think we're going to see? What – what Peyton Manning and level of effectiveness are we going to see, Mark? Yeah, you know, and I'm really concerned. I think that, that a bunch of different levels of this offense are really challenged. I think, one, Peyton Manning is, you know, a mere shadow of what he used to be. I think teams are forcing him to try to throw the ball outside the numbers, and his arm strength just isn't what it used to be. The timing with receivers, because he's been out for seven weeks, hasn't been good this season as well. Uh, the offensive line has been challenged. They've been um, – you know, below average at best, um, not consistently running the ball. So there's a lot of huge challenges. You know, everybody talks about Gronkowski and Edelman and Brady on the offensive side of the ball, and they totally forget that New England's a top-10 defense. I mean, they're a really outstanding group on the defensive side of the ball. So I think there's a huge offensive challenge to the, the for the uh, Denver Broncos going into this game. Now, I follow you on Twitter at Mark Schlereth. Mark, you, you have not parsed any words about what you think of this Denver offensive line. Where, where do you put them, rank them in terms of uh, the offense's issues, in terms of the running game? Because we always, we first half of the season, we've been pinning it on Manning and Kubiak not being on the same page or wanting to be on the same page. Can you break this down for me? Mark? Yeah, you know what? They, they've been awful, Rich. Um, they have gotten in the zone stretch running game. One of the first things you can't allow is you can't allow penetration in that game. Y'all got to come off the ball and y'all got to get movement and um, consistently breakdowns across the line of scrimmage, a lack of movement. So the running game has not been consistent. Um, part of the problem with uh, running that stretch game is the quarterback is responsible for holding the backside of a defense. Well, Nobody on anybody's backside of anybody's defense believes that Peyton Manning is going to keep the ball and threaten to run with it. So that helps, that hurts them from an offensive standpoint with that particular scheme. So that's, that's a problem. And then in pass protection, um, they have either physically gotten overwhelmed at both tackle positions or they have consistently busted protections um, on the inside part of the line of scrimmage. So they have, They've really been awful, um, and and you know what? They've overcome that with having a great defense. Is really how they've won games, and they've played exceptional special teams as well. But they're the top seed, though. I mean, New England's coming to their house. Uh, you I know, know it. it's it's really remarkable that they're the one seed. So you just pin it mostly on the defense here, because the receivers aren't even catching half of the balls <laughs> that Peyton Manning's sending their way right now. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, you know, I look at it from you know, historic defense, and, and you put a historic defense, doesn't matter, you put them out on the field for 35, 40 minutes, it's hard to maintain. It's hard to continue to play with the level um, of execution, the level of, of just energy that you have to have to be exceptional. So 
yeah, their defense has, has really got them to that number one seed offensively, as I mentioned. Um, they've got a lot of issues on the offensive side of the ball. I've got Mark Schlereth here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. How do, you, uh, how do you see the NFC Championship game going in Carolina? You know, I, I think Carson Palmer will play much better in this game. I think the Arizona Cardinals on the outside from the receiver position are as fast as anybody. And there's a couple of the issues, you know, from a health standpoint with the secondary of the Carolina Panthers. But the bottom line is I think the Carolina Panthers are the team we saw in the first half against the Seattle Seahawks, physically dominating the line of scrimmage. Their run game is really tough to contend with. And when you went back or I went back and watched the uh, wild card uh, game uh, last year between Arizona and Carolina, uh, Carolina absolutely eviscerated them in the running game with over 180 yards rushing. I discipline on the defense is a real issue for the Arizona Cardinals. I also missed tackles, but that's what Cam Newton and that running game do, do, uh, will do to you. So I just think the more physical team's going to win that game. That's the Carolina Panthers. Mark Schlereth joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So you think it's going to be a New England Carolina Super Bowl 50? Is that how you're seeing it right now based on your that comments? Yeah, that's how I'm seeing it, Rich. I think those are, are the two best teams right now, and that's the way I'm going. Mark Schlereth uh, here uh, on the show, as I mentioned. Uh, Terrell Davis and John Lynch and Steve Atwater, all finalists for the Hall of Fame, are going to be team captains for Denver <clears throat> prior to the AFC Championship game. And, you know, uh, TD, uh, I, I, I've got a big soft spot for um, having known him and worked with him for 12 years uh, ever since he stepped off the field for Denver. And the comments that we hear all the time is he didn't play long enough. He didn't have a long enough career to, to get enshrined. What do you say to that argument, Mark? I, you know, I say that he was one of the greatest running backs in the history of the league. And what he did, even though it was somewhat short-lived, you really did it over four seasons – it was one of the most exceptional four-year runs in the history of this league. Guy was a great football player. And, you know, I always tell people um, when the year he got hurt, Orlandis Gary came in and had 1,200 yards. TD would have had 1,700 with the same blocking. Uh, Mike Anderson the following year came in. I think he had 1,400 and some yards. TD would have gone over 2,000 again. And the 2,000-yard season, he had 2,007 yards. He would have set the NFL record. We pulled him out of the halftime of the Philadelphia game with, like, over 170 yards. Of the Washington game, probably about the same amount of yards. And of the Dallas game. So there was a, a, basically a game and a half that he didn't even play that season and still had 2,007 yards. He's a Hall of Famer in my book. Why isn't uh, Shanahan getting a job again, do you think, Mark? What's going on with that? He's been knocking on the door the last couple of years in the coaching carousel, but he's yeah, got... it's been it's been kind of crazy, right? I, I assumed he probably would get a job. Maybe it's because um, our teams, you know, want fresh blood. They want new coaches, and maybe they don't want to spend the uh, money it's going to take to to hire uh, Mike Shanahan. But the bottom line is, the guy can flat out coach. Um, and he's a two-time Super Bowl championship coach. So uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is. Uh, and maybe it's, uh, you know, he's, he wants things the way he wants things. But, uh, listen, if I was owning a team, I would certainly give him a shot. Yeah, I mean, it seems like he got the Cousins RG3 issue spot on, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, he looks like the genius coming out of that situation, even though, you know, on his way out, it was, oh, he got RG3 hurt. But the bottom line is people ridiculed him for drafting Cousins and for saying he thought Cousins was a franchise type of quarterback. And you know what? It's kind of come to fruition for Mike Shanahan. He looks kind of like a uh, soothsayer right now. Do you think Chip Kelly's going to work in the NFL? Do you think that works? Uh, no, not unless he drastically changes. The bottom line is he runs a cohesion system in a professional sport. And, you know, you can't go – you can't leave the league in three and outs and, and – last in time of possession um, and win with, with 46 game day guys. You put your defense behind the eight ball on a consistent basis, and you look at the second half of the season for the Philadelphia Eagles while there, the defense just dropped off the map. Um, it just is too much for those guys. So you've got to be able to control the clock at some time, and you've got to be able to eat things up a little bit from a clock management standpoint. You've got to keep the defense fresh. I don't believe that system works. I believe he needs to change it. Yeah, and do you think that's why he's going to – Vrabel said no. I mean, uh, d that d defensive coordinators are going to have to be arm-twisted to, to, to uh, yeah, hook up? Absolutely, Rich, absolutely. Uh, you know, do you want to get your first chance to be a defensive coordinator and have, have an offense that puts you on the field? I, I mean, 
way more than you should be on the field and, and wants to put you in that position to where you know you can't stay fresh, you know you can't keep your guys fresh, and you know that's – I mean, that's a, a huge challenge. I, I think it would be – I think it would be really tough, you know, unless you're just dying to be that defense coordinator. I think it would really be tough to have that uh, – have that as as the one you uh, take on there. Mark, thanks for joining. Uh, come in studio when you're in Los Angeles, please. I will definitely do that, Rich. I appreciate it, buddy. Take care. You, you bet. The Stinking Truth Podcast on Podcast One, which is where our podcast uh, resides. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs>